our God loves righteousness. He loves goodness. He's a good God. The Bible says he's holy, and holy is to be set apart from the practice and the presence and the power of sin and to be set apart to complete righteousness. He is completely good, completely holy. He is righteous in every way. There's no sin or shadow in him. He's a perfect God that loves us. And God loves virtue. He exalts virtue. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 that righteousness, goodness, that right standing with God, righteousness exalts a nation, but, a, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Now, righteousness, living in a way that's right and good before God, will exalt our nation, but sin is a disgrace. So many people have redefined what they think is right and what is good in their sight. The Bible says again, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. bitter. You know, God has a standard and his standard is his holy word. Now I want to read you some quotes by our forefathers who recognized that our freedoms, our liberties were based on a people that, that would love God and honor him, that would walk in such a way that was pleasing to God, in a way that God could bless, and that God would continue to extend his grace and extend his mercy because we were living in such a way that was pleasing to him. This quote is from Benjamin Franklin. Only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. Now this is from John Adams. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. This is Samuel Adams. The sum of all is, if we would most truly enjoy the gift of heaven, let us become a virtuous people. Then shall we both deserve and enjoy it. While, on the other hand, if we are universally vicious and debauched in our manners, Though the form of our Constitution carries the face of the most excellent freedoms, we shall in reality be the most abject slaves. Samuel Adams recognized this, that freedom comes from Jesus Christ. It comes from following him. It comes from honoring the Lord. This is George Washington's farewell address. Of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. Listen to what Thomas Jefferson has to say. He says, all tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. Now, what does that mean to us in these 2012 elections where so many people want to be politically correct? It means this, again, Righteousness does exalt a nation, and sin is a disgrace to any people, according to Proverbs, the 14th chapter, God's word. We, as God's people, and the people of the United States, need to turn our hearts toward the Lord and vote according to what is right and good in his sight. And listen, God's word, the Bible, is the standard of our nation. We were built upon Judeo-Christian values, our nation was. Now let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for the United States of America. I thank you for the freedoms and the liber liberties that you've given to us, unlike any nation on this earth, Lord God. We are so blessed, Lord God. We are so blessed of you. Thank you, Lord God. And God, again, we claim the scriptures, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that if your people that are called by your name will humble themselves, pray, seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways, Lord God. Lord, then you'll hear from heaven. You'll forgive our sins and you will heal our land. So we're asking for healing for our land, Lord God. We are sorry for the sins of this nation, Lord God. Let this nation once again be a moral people, Lord, a people that honor your word, Lord, that stand for what is right and good in your sight, Lord God. God, we're asking that you set in men and women like this that will honor your word, that will honor our constitution, Lord God, that fear you and, Lord, will do what is just and right in your sight. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now press share, and let's get people praying for these 2012 elections. God bless you. Bye-bye.